If at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. In life, you will get knocked down plenty of times. No, maybe that's for somebody else. We're just going to keep you right where you're at right now. It doesn't matter what you think. The Wrestling Realm presents Break It Down with Brian H. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Break It Down with Brian H. We are just days away from WWE Backlash. You know what? Backlash has always been the um, backlash to WrestleMania. What didn't happen that should have happened or perhaps it's a rematch. In this case, we did have the greatest Royal Rumble in between. So some people are saying backlash feels lackluster. They say it's not been enough buildup. I tend to disagree. I feel like every pay-per-view, it would be nice to have a great build-up, but in this case, it's not really necessary because it's not like we haven't had stories going on. It's not like that some of the stuff isn't going to continue from what happened at Greatest Royal Rumble. So, you know, let's get right into it. We're going to start off with the WWE Championship. As you know, we have Shinsuke Nakamura taking on AJ Styles. Why did this match happen? Well, Shinsuke came out, and him and AJ, they wrestled to a double just double count out at the Greatest Royal Rumble. So now we're going to get the hopefully the payoff, and it has been named a no disqualification match. So what does this mean? Huh, that means Shinsuke could do as many low blows as it takes for him to become the new WWE Champion. And guess what? If that wasn't enough, you had, because let's forget, let me slow down. Shinsuke won an apology. AJ Styles basically wasn't going to give it to him. But then we move on because, and the real Dwayne Allen and I talked about this. There's a guy named Samoa Joe, and he made his presence known this week on SmackDown. And he said, whether it's Shinsuke or you, AJ Styles, I'm coming and I'm taking the WWE Championship. So now we got Samoa Joe in the wings. The guy is just a major player. He's been a major player since he's got to the WWE. When he arrived at NXT, he was the first person to beat Shinsuke. And if you look at this guy, you would not know that he had some lackluster times. Not his whole career, obviously. But he had some lackluster times in total nonstop action, or late, which later became Impact Wrestling. But now, ever since he's been in the WWE... He's been a major player. So that's going to be interesting. Samoa Joe kind of, because he's got to face Roman Reigns, which he's already vowed that he's going to take him out. But afterwards, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Meanwhile, AJ Shinsuke, once again, a rivalry new. We saw on the last Tuesday on SmackDown, Shinsuke Nakamura, once again, leaving AJ flat in the ring. Who wins? I'll get into that later in the, when I go over the whole card and give my predictions. Let's move on to Big Cass. Now, I know he, he's showing improvement. One of the things that I listened to Roddy Piper say years ago is that these guys rush through their promo. He said they need to be slower. And that's one of the things I didn't see with Cass. He's vowing to beat up Daniel Bryan. He brings out a midget, which I am not a fan of. Just, all right, we get it. You're bigger, he's smaller, and you feel like you should be the guy that's getting that big pop. And I understand Daniel Bryan's a big star, so if you want to make a name for yourself, you go after the biggest star. But, like, come on, let's get more creative than that. But, you know, they had the midget, and, I mean, for goodness sakes, it hasn't been good since the time DX brought out Brett the Hitman Hart, that midget. Um, but, nonetheless... Big Cass, Daniel Bryan should be an interesting feud. Um, we saw Cass eliminate Daniel Bryan, so that's what, and this is what I'm talking about as far as setting up things to happen later down the line. That's why Greatest Royal Rumble kind of set up this nugget for Backlash because obviously you wasn't going to put them two in a one on one match then. So let's take our first break. What's up, good people? My name is Mikkel Ramos, host of your favorite sports podcast, Roaming the Airwaves, Rolling with Ramos. And you're listening to Break It Down with Brian H., brought to you by The Wrestling Realm. All right, so that's Mikkel Ramos. 
which you can find her on SoundCloud, um, Rolling with Ramos, The Real Dwayne Allen, and I was just on there. To give you a quick preview of what we talked about as I continue the show, um, we discussed the women of wrestling not participating when the WWE went to Saudi Arabia. Um, we discussed why the possibilities you may have known. I discussed it on the last show in the episode eight, as well as the Royal uh, Greatest Royal Rumble post show. But I'm not going to go in and spoil it. Make sure you check out her show. You'll find links on the Wrestling Realm and on my page at Brian H. Waters. But let's move on because SmackDown closed with Oscar, Charlotte, and Becky Lynch defeating. Carmella and the Iconics. Um, as you know, Carmella will defend her women's championship against Charlotte. The match, the title that she beat her when she cashed in her money in a bank uh, after help with the from the Iconics. I really love the fact that this match closed the show. It was an awesome match. Um, Charlotte's just on another level, but. She's going out there and kind of much like her Hall of Fame dad, just making other wrestlers better. Um, she's going out there and she's making them much better. She's on her way to Ty and Trish Stratus for most WWE Women's Championship reigns. And, you know, somebody with some less intelligence, less wrestling minds may say that means she lost the belt over and over again. No, what it means is that... She's reliable, and when they wanted to make a new star, that's who they called on. So, make sure if you haven't seen this match, make sure you go out your way to see it because it was a great match. Um, you get a women's match to close the show, and it was good quality wrestling. Um, and speaking of women on SmackDown, we saw Absolution no more. Absolution, as you know, was Paige, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville. Well, Paige is the GM of SmackDown, and when she brought over Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, those two ladies thought they were going to get special treatment. Paige made it clear, no, there's no special treatment. That's not going to happen. So, guess what? Next week, it's going to be Mandy Rose versus Becky Lynch. Mandy Rose just knew she was getting a title shot. Paige said, uh-uh. Uh, moving on to Raw, we saw... Um, Natalia taking on Mickey James with Ronda Rousey in her corner. Uh, and, of course, Mickey James and Alexa Bliss uh, um, partners. But there was uh, some beatdowns. But, you know, Natalia and Ronda Rousey got the upper hand. And as Becky, uh, excuse me, as Alexa Bliss was trying to get away, here comes Nia Jax. So, of course, she took off running. And Nia Jax kind of had a little stare down. Not really stare down, but kind of like a, Whose yard is this moment with Ronda Rousey and Natalia? She looked before ultimately raising both of their hands. I thought that was great. Um, Nia Jax season up, sizing up the competition. We know she's not going to be able to have allies on a consistent basis. But guess what? She's going to have to, you know, eventually we're going to see the showdown between Nia Jax and Ronda Rousey. Whether it would be this year or next year. Now, I thought it was interesting. I saw on Twitter a couple of people were predicting that we're going to get Natalia versus Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam. That would be interesting. Who knows? Um, but I'm enjoying what they're doing right here. We're getting Rousey every week. A lot of people didn't think we would, but we are. And it's a slow build. And when the time is right, we'll see her in the ring. Uh, moving on to the men, Seth Rollins vows to be a defending Intercontinental Champion. And, you know, he took some shots at Brock Lesnar, said he's going to be there every week. And it makes you wonder, why are you doing that? Um, but, hey, to each his own, guess what? When we do know that the la first time Rollins got the belt, he was taking it from Lesnar. Now, he didn't pin him, but in the record books, it was Lesnar's champion, then it was Seth Rollins' champion. But... He may want to stay away from Brock Lesnar because we all know what happened during the rematch. And he was almost beat, but Undertaker saved him. Undertaker doesn't have a beef with Brock Lesnar anymore, so might want to stay away from that, buddy. But him and Finn Balor had another great match, which I'm wondering, okay, what else can you this few give me besides great matches? Will one of these guys turn heel? 
um, sometimes you need that because, like, even with AJ and Shinsuke, when both of them were faces, you know, it was booked as a dream match because we hadn't seen it in the WWE Universe before. And with Finn Balor and Seth Rollins, we saw this in the first Universal Championship match. So I want to see what happens next with these two. Um, one of the things that was great when we saw the Miz Taraj come out there and say, let's create the full horseman. Um, these guys are just hilarious. I really enjoy watching everything they do, to be honest with you. Uh, I would love to see them on television more. Hopefully after this, they'll find something for them to do because they're just funny. But it was cool seeing them actually have the T-shirts because I'm pretty sure like somebody would buy that if it was available. But nonetheless, um, obviously they got beat up. But it was Seth Rollins and Finn Balor to end the show. Seth Rollins will be defending his IC championship against The Miz at Backlash. And I kind of have an idea how that's going to go. Um, also on Monday Night Raw, Elias claimed he won after Bobby Roode injured his throat. Or, yeah, his throat or neck on the um, turnbuckle corner. Uh, you got... Who wants to walk with Elias? You know, WWE stands for walk with Elias. He's one of those guys who is just good. When he touches the mic, you listen. You want to know what he's going to do. This guy had a good spot at WrestleMania, which I thought, hey, if you can't be on the card, but you get to go out there and talk, that's huge. Because for the casual fan, they're going to be like, wait, who's this guy? Uh, I think I want to see this guy. So I think Elias does have a great future. I would like to see, but I kind of wish Bobby Roode was still on SmackDown. Right now, SmackDown is getting hot. You imagine Bobby Roode over there. I know it'd be, it would feel like all TNA alumni, but guess what? WWE signed them for a reason because they knew they were good when they were the TNA. So let's take a quick break. Got a word from the homie. What's good, everybody? This is your boy Drizzy Dre, Mr. One and Only from the Flex Zone, Mondays at 10 p.m. on WBGR. And right now you are listening to Break It Down with my boy Brian H., brought to you by the Wrestling Realm. All right, that is Dre of the Flex Zone. And speaking of the Flex Zone, these guys had the one, the only, the two-time podcast champion of the world, Bruce Pritchard, on their most recent episode Make sure you go out your way to check that out. You can find them at the Flex Zone One on Twitter and on Facebook. You can find them at the Flex Zone, same as YouTube. Now, Bruce Pritchard said a lot of good stuff, but one of the things I got to talk about is he called Ember Moon a future megastar. That's high praise coming from somebody who used to book for the WWE. The closest you can get to Vince McMahon outside of Pat Patterson in a wrestling capacity, was Bruce Pritchard. He was there during the golden era. You know, around the time it was Hogan and Savage, then the Michaels and Brett, then the Austin and Rock, then the Cena, Edge, and Orton. Bruce Pritchard was there. And this is the guy who you listen to as opposed to that guy named Dave Meltzer. Um, so, great, a uh, lot of good talking points. D, Raj, they didn't, add, they didn't shy away from any questions. They asked all the right questions, in my opinion. Um, so, including, he even talked about Hulk Hogan. So, make sure you check out the latest episode of the Flex Zone. Let's move on to the top rope this week. Going up to the top rope. It's time for this week's top rope segment of the week. All right. Are you getting a new t-shirt? Yeah, my top rope is the one, the only tightest worldwide. Getting a new t-shirt. How about that? This is what I'm talking about. Your first, you don't succeed. Get yourself up and try again. Titus tripped on his way to the greatest Royal Rumble match. Probably the best match of the, um, the best part of the night or evening or in, in our case over in the United States, daytime. But nonetheless, Titus slipped and fell. He made a joke about it. Everybody made a joke about it. Clearly, it broke the internet. And guess what? He's going to be cashing that. And as we used to say, that's main event all the way to the bank. Titus O'Neil, get that new shirt, and I'm going to get one myself. So, let's move on. Um, you know what? We're going right into the tapped out. Here's our tapped out segment of the week. 
All right, my tapped out this week is Lana saying something is holding Rusev back. It just, unless they swerve us, which I hope they do, this lets you know they're talking about Aiden English, and I do not like it at all. I like these two together. Aiden English, let's be real, Rusev is talented, and he's good, and he's funny. But Aiden English put him in a different level just by singing Rusev Day. This was something we look forward to each and every week. We can't take that away. Come on now. So hopefully they swerve us because I don't want to see that happen. So let's move on to 205 Live. Hopefully you got a chance to check it out. Um, But if you didn't, let me give you some quick nuggets here. Hideo Itami walks out on Akira Tozawa after that match. Tozawa inadvertently, um, well, he was on the ropes, and he fell, and Hideo Tommy was thrown into the ropes, which um, caused Tozawa to fall. And Tommy looked at him, and that let Brian Kendrick get a uh, put a move on him. And I'm showing you how much I was paying attention. To him. Let him put a move on him, which eventually led to gentleman Jack Gallagher beating up Tozawa and getting a win. And Hideo Tommy just walked out. Now, if you're a, if you were a Kenta fan or a Dale Tommy fan, I know this got to be frustrating. Hopefully, the way I'm looking at it is hopefully this is the turn that builds to him, builds him to becoming a new cruiserweight champion down the line, maybe around SummerSlam, because right now Buddy Murphy's in that picture. But you know, we don't want to continue to see. Hideo Tommy in tag team matches. This was a guy who was, bo- I mean, he, for goodness sakes, when he signed his contract, who was there? The immortal Hulk Hogan. So you talk about high expectations, and he has not lived up to him. Now you can make the case that he got injured, but still, it is what it is. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, uh, Neville, these guys lived up to the expectations. Hideo Tommy didn't, so the jury is still out on him. Um, we also saw Cedric and Buddy Murphy get into it. You know, Buddy Murphy, he he started something with Cedric before he couldn't make weight. Cedric didn't forget. This would probably, I wouldn't be surprised if they made that match this week. If they didn't already by the time you're listening, that will be Cedric Alexander versus Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight Championship. Um, so, but Buddy Murphy looks like a million bucks and you've been watching him lately, I have to give a shout out to the real Dwayne Allen, because he told me, he's like, man, check out that guy, Buddy Murphy, look at him, he's, he's, he's showing that he's a player, so, he could be, and I, I think he's the guy that will be Cedric, don't really need a long title run, I mean, I know everybody waited for the moment, it was good, but these guys don't need long title runs on 205, live so let's take a quick break. this is glenn thomas with the wrestling marks for excellence and you're listening to break it down with brian h waters brought to you by the wrestling realm all right that is glenn thomas of fox sports 1340 make sure you check him and Corey out on wrestling marks of excellence uh these guys always give a different perspective i like talking to glenn talk to glenn every day but i really like talking to him about wrestling because by him being older than me, he can give me the old school mentality or the old school ways. Um, a lot of times, I can under, I can ask him questions as far as well, what happened when Dusty Rose did X Y Z, and he can give it to me the same way and you know put himself in that mindset of what it was like the same way I do with my son when I talk about Bret Hart or Hulk Hogan. So um, this week coming up, we got on NXT because I'm recording on Tuesday. We got Pete Dunne going against Roderick Strong. If you think we're getting a match, you've got another thing coming. Um, one, this is going to be something special uh, because of what happened at TakeOver. Roderick Strong and Pete Dunne were challenging for the tag team titles, and Roderick Strong turned on him. And then came out and said, you know, the reason why he did it, because he knew Pete Dunne would do it first. So why not beat him to the punch? So guess what? You got it. This one will probably have a... Uh, the undis- uh, undisputed era will probably come out there and get involved. I just don't see this match turn uh, happening this week. But if it does, I'm looking forward to it because I know there's going to be some hard hitting. Talk about strong style. So let's look at some news that's going on and dissect it. Rumor in says Bo- Bobby Lashley 
versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. That was the original plans. Uh, but according to the reports, Lesnar hasn't even agreed to the SummerSlam date yet, which, let's be real, I'm pretty sure he had to agree to that. If he's the Universal Champion and he's a big star, SummerSlam is the summertime version of WrestleMania for those who do not know. I can't see Brock Lesnar not being a SummerSlam. Whether or not Bobby Lashley is going to be his opponent, that's a different story. I do think we'll get that... Um, People aren't happy the way Bobby Lashley is being booked. But, uh, again, slow down. Stop playing couch booker. You know, Bobby Lashley, he'll be fine. Just get rid of the headband. I don't think I know anybody who likes that headband. Um, also, new uh, rumor in your window, Sasha Banks getting deep pushed because of her attitude. Um, you know, she did take a, a L on the other night. But I think if she was getting deep pushed, we wouldn't see it. There's enough women on the roster that we could, uh, that the WWE could put on TV and just deal with the heat that the fans are going to give. I don't think she's getting deep pushed because of whatever reports are saying. I just think that right now, she doesn't have to win these matches and it's setting up for a bigger story. And I want to send the congratulations to the one and only Flip Gordon on finishing his Army career and say a special thank you. Have uh, one of my closest cousin is in the army so you know the army is definitely uh, well military in general have a special place uh in my heart you know i really appreciate everything and the service that those men and women do so it's time for wrestling for the culture it's time for wrestling for the culture where we take a look inside to see what the wrestlers of color have been doing this week Wrestling for the culture this week. Brandy Rose makes her debut in Japan in the ring. How about that? You know, January, she uh, accompanied her husband to the ring. Uh, a couple years ago, she was ring announcer for WWE, but now she's wrestling in the ring in Japan. It's very awesome to see how her career has just come full circle. Um, if you know, she started off as a wrestler, but they decided to make her a backstage announcer. And then she started, left WWE was just managing her husband. Now she's getting dirty in the ring. Cedric Alexander calls himself Mr. Dropkick. Make sure you check out the story and the tweets on thebrianhwaters.com where you can also make sure you're making your purchases, your Amazon purchases, and, you know, help the show out. Titus O'Neil celebrated his birthday this week. So how about Titus? You know, he had the greatest moment at the Greatest Royal Rumble, celebrated his birthday, got roasted by the internet, and he's getting a new t-shirt. So how about that? Another thing that, you know, Bruce Pritchard said, Titus took it well, and this could be a great moment for him and set him up and could make him. And Shane Strickland staying hot in MLW. So I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, Strickland, yeah, he took on Jimmy Havoc and was successful in the match. He won. It was a non-title match. But let's get ready. One more break before we go into our backlash prediction. People, what is up? This is the Shark, Sean Williams, host of the Shark Attack, soon to be on Podbean. And you are listening to my good friend, Mr. Wrestling Intelligence Personified, Mr. Main Event, the franchise player himself, the impact player, the man with so much flair yet so debonair, my good friend, Brian H. Waters, right here on Break It Down. That is the one, the only, the shark, Sean Williams. Make sure you check out his podcast. You can get a good perspective of professional wrestling from the one and only, the shark. Got to give him credit because a lot of these Ring of Honor guys that you're seeing, he called it. Um, he schooled me a lot on Ring of Honor. To be honest with you, in 2012, the first time I heard, actually 2011, the first time I heard of Kevin Steen was through his blog. Um, so let's move on. We're at backlash. So predictions. We got Jeff Hardy defending the United States title against Randy Orton. I think Jeff Hardy comes out successful. Uh, we did see Randy Orton get an RKO out of nowhere. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Randy just kind of beat him down at, uh, after the match. But I think Jeff Hardy wins this one. Seth Rollins taking on the Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. Miz looking to break Chris Jericho's record. Don't think it's going to happen on this night. Seth Rollins wins. 
Big Cass take it on Daniel Bryan. As much as I want to see Daniel Bryan win, I think Big Cass cheats the win uh, and kind of keeps uh, keeps the heat going. Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley taking on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Now, Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman, you have two strong guys here. You have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, two guys who know each other, two guys who you wouldn't be surprised to see them kind of play Braun and Bobby Lashley against each other. In this one, they, they lost at WrestleMania. I got to go with them. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, Bobby Lashley, and Braun Strowman. Strowman's the guy who really don't trust anybody, so I can't see him winning this one. Roman Reigns taking on Samoa Joe. Now, I'm really confused about this because, you know, I look at Roman Reigns has been on a losing streak lately, and Samoa Joe has just came out and said he's positioned himself to go after the WWE Championship next. I understand Joe and Reigns are on different shows, but it would make sense for Samoa Joe to beat Roman Reigns so he would have a legitimate argument as opposed to making excuses. But Roman has also lost two pay-per-views in a row. So this is where the limits of coin toss, but you know what? I think I'm going to go with Samoa Joe to win that one. Nia Jax taking on Alexa Bliss. Nia Jax defending her newly won women's championship. She's not losing it no time soon. Nia Jax wins this one. We have Charlotte taking on, challenging Carmella for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Charlotte Flair, she's good, she's great, but the Iconics going to have something to say about that. Carmella will retain. And then for the WWE Championship, we have AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I, and this is a no disqualification match. As much as I kind of want to say AJ, I'm going to go out on a limb and be different. I know AJ went down last, but I'm going to say Shinsuke is going to win this one. I really believe it's now or never for Shinsuke, especially with Samoa Joe coming along. And then let's not forget, they're on the same show with Daniel Bryan. So it's only a matter of time before he gets in that title picture. And The Miz, too. Let's be real. So, I'm going to go with Samoa Joe. I mean, excuse me. I'm going to go with Shinsuke Nakamura to win this one and become the new WWE champion. Now, it's time from the realm. And now, for this week's questions from the realm. All right, this week we got four questions all coming from the shark. So, let's start off. How come Elias basically said, how come Elias is better on the main roster than NXT? Triple H said this guy wasn't really meant to stay in NXT that long. You know, they had plans for him on the main roster. So, that's the reason why we really don't remember Elias Sampson on NXT. Um, Will we see Samoa Joe and AJ Styles face off before the year is over? Well, clearly, the question was submitted before SmackDown. Absolutely. We will see them. I think we get a match possibly at Money in a Bank between these two. Or we could get the match at SummerSlam. Uh, how long before we see Braun get some gold, excluding the Raw title win and the greatest Royal Rumble belt he got? I know people say Braun doesn't need the belt and where do you go from here? But at the same time, I think it's building and it's building and it's building. And I think if you want to have a good moment with him, you might give it to him around Survivor Series Royal Rumble if you don't want to wait till WrestleMania. I think you wait till you have a big moment and you have a big money matchup and that's where Braun Strowman gets the WWE Universal Championship. And last but not least, is the WWE losing faith or backing off the Roman Reigns experiment? Couldn't wait to answer this question. I think so. I think when you look at a guy like Braun Strowman, then you look at Roman Reigns, it seemed like the reactions that Braun Strowman is getting is every reaction that they wanted Roman Reigns to get. But we have not forgiven him yet from 2015. And because of that, it's not working. Now, Daniel Bryan is back and maybe a champion again. I just don't know how you bounce back after that. Um... It seemed like every time Roman had a chance where he would be cheered, even when he won the title, when he beat Sheamus in Philadelphia, I think maybe the fans were more happy of a title change. 
uh, but it just seems like it's just not working. And I think they are backing off. I think we'll definitely know what happens after backlash if it's really coming to a halt if he loses clean to Samoa Joe. So, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for this edition of Break It Down with Brian H. Make sure you are tuned in each and every week. Make sure you have subscribed to YouTube, Podbean, iTunes. And guess what? Go on iTunes. Drop me a five-star rating and leave a comment. And I promise I'll give you a shout-out. Yeah, leave a comment. The five-star rating is great. But leave a comment, too, so people know that this is the show of superior wrestling intellect and make sure you subscribe to youtube and check out some of the videos that we have i promise you you'll love it so until the next time i'm brian h waters so long everyone